Not yet. All right, now I think you might be able to talk to people. Hey, Hi. Whoa, Hi. Sorry, this going live thing is kind of strange. Okay, I am Tara, the author of the Dieting on a Dine cookbook where you can eat better, spend less. You can get this spiral copy on our website, livingonadime.com, or you can pre-order the new hardcover color copy coming out in January. Woo! Woo um, and hopefully that will be here then. All right, today we are making, what are we making? Homemade mashed potatoes. Did you know that mashed potatoes don't come in a box? What do you mean they don't come in a box? Mashed potatoes really don't come in a box. Okay. That's just a fake form of mashed potatoes. Oh, oh, I see what you're saying. Real mashed potatoes come from potatoes. What? Yes. Who knew? Who knew? <laughs> Wow, what so, victory is this? But, just so you guys don't think that I'm being sarcastic, my family actually loves the box, boxed mashed potatoes. <laughs> so we kind of have both of both because I like both of them. Okay, Diana and I'm Cookbook, page 179. Now, you can see here my little notations. This is, if you need it, a gluten-free, dairy-free recipe, and we... Busted our tails on Friday and got done the gluten-free, dairy-free Thanksgiving post for $35 for Thanksgiving for gluten-free, dairy-free. And that's for 10 people. Guys, this is a stinking cheap dinner. Thanksgiving is like one of the cheapest dinners of the whole year. Um, so if you need that, these recipes actually taste yummy. And you can do it. Today, um... We are going to show you how to make homemade mashed potatoes. Um, so do I share the the regular recipe or the gluten-free? Well, why don't recipe? you share both? Okay. So back here, I have my water coming to a boil. Okay. Uh oh. So guys, the uh, recipes are the Thanksgiving dinner recipes. Is where the mashed potatoes are. Yep. Okay, so I've peeled my potatoes, but I just wanted to show you something. Don't chop your potatoes up in little tiny pieces for mashed potatoes. Save yourself a ton of work, slice it in half, and then slice it in quarters. And that's all you need. Now, if it's a super, super big potato, you could do it in thirds if you want. But then, that will save you a ton of time cutting up, mash, or cutting up potatoes. Okay, right there. Now, usually it's about one potato per person plus one. If you want leftovers, I would do one and a half potatoes to two potatoes per person, okay? So we're putting all that in our water to boil. Now, Mike loves garlic mashed potatoes. You know it. <laughs> Mike loves almost anything with garlic. I think you're a vampire. Wait. Do vampires like garlic, or does no. it keep them away? No, in fact, oh, it would be evidence that I'm not a vampire. That eat so that's much garlic. why we don't have vampires because you eat so much garlic. Okay. <laughs> All right, so peeling my garlic. Here's an easy way to peel garlic. I don't know why I'm dinking with it the old way. Let me zoom in. Here. Oh dear, Dave forgot to zoom in. Oops. Oh no, okay. I just didn't. So think what you do it. is you smash your garlic down with the back of your knife, and then the top or I mean the top, the skin just peels right off, okay? And you don't have to be messing with it. So, for garlic mashed potatoes, I just take the full garlic cloves here like this, and through the magic of television, Dave. Uh oh, yeah. Then, I just pour my garlic cloves in with my right. potatoes, me, and then I'm just gonna mash it. Let me all together okay Sorry, I think all right so, out, so we got our mashed potatoes started and now we're gonna make my favorite one of my favorite black broccoli salads um it just depends Wait, so, Steve's in so 
hold on just a minute. I gotta show you guys something today here while we're getting going. So, come back up to me for a moment. For those of you wondering, we got our apron designs back. Super, super excited. Yay! I'm ordering 500 of these. We're gonna have 500 that we can guarantee for Christmas, and then after that, it may or may not make it in time for Christmas. But we've got, the world needs more salt, people. Can they see that? Mm -hmm. Isn't that cute? And then, because you guys were divided half and half in which one you wanted, we got, the world need more salt, people, number two. Right there. And then we have, get it together, people. <laughs> right there. Now, these are going to be for sale, hopefully Wednesday. We hope. Um, here's the thing. This Get It Together People one is going to be going in our Get It Together People planner pack, gift pack for Christmas. Um, I'm going to talk about that a little bit more in just a, a bit about that. But um, we're going to have those three, so you guys are forewarned. If you aren't signed up for our newsletter, Mike will put a link in there for you. Oh. That was a surprise. And, sorry. We will notify you on all our social media, but our newsletter is the place where we send um, everybody. And if you sign up for our newsletter, you get a free e-cookbook, digital cookbook, that is 20 dinners in 20 minutes. You heard that right, folks. 20 dinners in 20 minutes. <laughs> so there's no charge. We just made that up for you guys to have if you sign up for a newsletter. But that is how, if we ever have problems with Facebook or YouTube, our newsletter is where you will be able to get information on whatever is happening. Okay, so my potatoes are back here getting ready to boil for about 10 minutes if you are at regular altitude. I am at high altitude, so I usually do them about 15 excuse me about 15 okay i'm sharing the recipe for the broccoli salad now but if you miss any of the recipes they are in the description and they're also on our show notes at livingonadime.com yep yep all right now this broccoli salad is not in this cookbook it's going in our next one the sequel coming out in early spring we hope how's that going dear what's that <laughs> you got <laughs> it hasn't moved in a couple of days. Oh, we keep having stuff coming up, and we're like, ah, we gotta get this good book done. We can't be handling other crises right now. Uh, okay, so I'm just chopping up my broccoli. This broccoli has been washed. Yes, you heard that. There is a wash, an R in wash. It's just the rest of the English speaking world has not caught up with that yet. Sorry, they're so behind there. <laughs> Hope says, my 11-year-old just walked in and excitedly said, ooh, living on a dime. He's uh, excited to watch. Thanks. I wonder what her son, hi, 11-year-old. How are you? Thank you for watching us. If Jack was here, he would say hi. <laughs> um, yeah, we were. I was up. I had to make an unexpected run up to the printer today to do some corrections on our new planner. And... Uh, <laughs> They were laughing at me about wash. <laughs> I just don't understand how how people are so far behind the times, but you know that's okay. I've always been ahead of the times. I've always been ahead of the times. Well, it's even funny. Go even Google's off, you know. Yeah, well, even Google, Google doesn't, doesn't know doesn't everything. Know. Oh man! I got news for you. Uh, <laughs> actually, what's hilarious is we really are ahead of the times. Every time a decorating style comes around, mom and I have already been doing it for like two or three years. <laughs> so now they're saying all the neutral colors are getting ready to go out and all the bright, vivid colors are coming back. Well, you can't see it because my lights are off, but my living room is yellow walls with red accents with um, green kitchen with red accents in the kitchen. <laughs> 
<laughs> so here we're, we're trendsetters and we didn't even know it. Okay, so I've got all the broccoli in here. Now this recipe is on our website. Michael put the link for you. Now, um... Uh, the recipe okay. for, this is the broccoli salad. For the broccoli salad. Now this recipe is super, super easy. Um, just cut up your broccoli and then you can add as much or little to this recipe as you want. So if you have 25 or 30 people coming for dinner, you can quadruple this recipe. If you only have two, you can cut it in half. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna take your mayo, you're gonna put your mayo in. I don't even measure for this because why? Just why, okay? Then my raisins, I don't have any bacon or I would put bacon in here, you can put bacon in here. And then your little bit of sugar, and then your sunflower seeds. Okay, and then you just mixing all the ingredients. Yep, I oh. like finely chopped onion. Uh -huh. So I'm gonna put it in my chopper, and you guys can get this on our Amazon store. Michael put a link for our Amazon store for it. You. You're gonna want to see this chop. It's super That's cool. the chopper you said. Yes. Should I turn down the mic while you do it? Oh, um, no. well, yeah, you might. Uh, I don't know. Can you turn it down, Dave? Well, yeah. Okay. Just set it in the back of it. All right, so just peel your onion however you want. All right, there we go. Then you're going to stick your chopper. You ready? Go. There you go. Whoops, there's a piece of skin. All nice and finely diced. Then I just rinse this in the sink and you're done. Oh, Super that's nice. Easy. That's very nice. Cindy said, Susie Bandana gave your cookbook a great plug on her program today. Aww. We love Susie. <laughs> Thanks, Susie. Okay, so then you're just gonna put your onion in here and then you're just gonna <laughs> stir and if you need a little more mayo add a little more mayo if you like more raisins you can add more raisins you can just do this however you want and just get it all stirred up and usually I let this sit about an hour but for Thanksgiving you can make this ahead of time if you're serving four people, this recipe costs about a dollar to a dollar fifty, depending on how much your broccoli is. Usually, broccoli is on sale the week before Thanksgiving. But okay, so then of course you grab a bite of luscious goodness here. Oh, you want me to come up? Mmm. Oh, I forgot the vinegar. Hold on. Mm. Okay, get the vinegar stirred right here. Mm. Love the chopper. Yes, yes. Roberta, it's fun. It's, it's a great favorite. way to get your okay. uh, <laughs> to get your frustrations out. Mm. That looks yummy. Yes, this is so good, and it is gluten free and dairy free. <laughs> And it is so stinking good. You guys, gluten-free, dairy-free does not mean you have to be without tasty food. Okay. Now, like I said, normally I let this sit for at least an hour. But, whoops, here. We're going to have Mike do a little taste test here. Mmm. 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 Man, I love Isn't this that stuff. delicious? It's one of our most favorite recipes. Man. Yeah. That is going with our dinner, which I'll show you here real quick while the potatoes are still boiling. Yeah. So before I ran up to the printer today, I threw in our, our dinner and look at this. Luscious roast. Ooh, let me see. Yum. And then we're gonna have all that yummy gravy to make gravy to go on top of our potatoes. Super yummy. All right. That took like three minutes to do. I took it out of the package and 
I threw it in the pan, put my seasoned salt on it, a cup of water, and it's in there. All right, now. A number of people saying they make, they've make they made this recipe with the dried cranberries. Oh yeah, dried that cranberries would too. be really good. Yeah. Okay, so my potatoes need about five more minutes. You stick a knife in and um, if it goes through really easy, then your potatoes are done. Lumpy potatoes are because of two things. One, you don't let your potatoes cook long enough. If you're at high altitude, you need to add an extra five minutes. But use your beaters instead of a hand masher and they will get smooth, a lot smoother. A uh, couple questions. Lynn is asking, was the mayo dairy free? It's just mm -hmm. eggs, right? Mayo's always dairy free. Well, if you're if you're egg intolerant, then if you're egg intolerant, no. But eggs are not really dairy. They're in the dairy section, but eggs are not dairy. I'm talking cows. So anything milk that has cows milk in it. Black okay. toast. Uh, yeah. Judy says that the chopper is not on the Amazon store. What? I thought I put it on there. Let me go look. Um. Uh, Elizabeth wanted to know how much pressure do you need to put on the chopper for it to work? Not much. You just not a lot. You just out. slap it. I don't know. I thought it was on here. Yeah, oh, right there. It's, oh, well, it's, it's a, a different one than I have. This one is the Cuisinart one. Uh, it's the same principle, though. I got Mom the Cuisinart one, and she liked it, so that's why I put that one on there. And it was a little less expensive than ours, right? Yeah, and it was less expensive than the one that I have from Pampered Chef, so. And it worked just as good. Um... All right, what was I talking about? Oh, yes, so I wanted to show you guys. So I went up to the printers today to get um, planners we, corrections done, but I gotta show you, as I was there, look what came in. Dun, dun, dun! We gotta get that drum roll thingy on there. Okay, so, do you guys know? Do you guys know? What that is? Jamie just texted me and said you guys want to you guys want me to make the gravy. I can make the gravy. You guys know what that is? That is the binding machine for the new planners. Yeah. Yes. So I got to see the stock for the covers. They came as I was there. Super exciting. The stock and the binding machine all came while I was there. So they are getting all set up. We have um, the inside of the planner is almost done. I went up today to get the corrections on that. But here's what I was gonna say. This apron right here, this get it together apron, it'll probably be for sale Wednesday. But here's the thing. If you want my get it together people gift set, planner gift set, this apron is gonna be in it, okay? So we're going to have the whole gift set with the apron, the planner in two sizes, 5x8 or 8x11, financial planner, a price book, a refrigerator magnet shopping list, a refrigerator magnet to-do list for like the family members, that kind of thing. Toured once in and the a menus on a dime until supplies last on the menus on a dime. I've only got 240 of those to help you with your menu planning. So we're going to have all that in our gift set. So if you want an apron, but you're wanting the planner gift set, don't order the apron by itself. Wait until we get the planner listed. Hopefully Monday. I hope hopefully Monday. So, all right. Now, all right. Now let's see. So let me test. Oh, Dave, can you hand me a um, plate? Yeah. Um, okay, so we had some questions. Sorry. That's all we had. Um, do you add sunflower seeds? I do. Yeah, I did. And um, let's see. Somebody else asked about the mayo. That was actual mayonnaise, not the salad Miracle dressing. Or yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So to test um, your can't really see that because the light's blowing it out. Dead. 
Here, like this. Is this better, Dave? Yeah, but no, it's still like one. Okay, let's just do it this way. So, <laughs> did you guys see how my knife just slid right through there? I mean, it didn't even take me half a second. That's how you know your potatoes are done, okay? Your knife just goes right in. All right, so now we're gonna turn this off and we're gonna go. Oh. I'm quickly gonna turn off the overhead and see if it helps. <gasps> helps Did we just lose bit. power? Oh, no, you turned the light off. I said I was going to turn it off because I wasn't sure. It'll make it look cold. Yeah, it looks cold, but it's not as bright, so I was just trying to see if it would work. Okay, so we have our potatoes here. All right, Dave. Now, I am making this one dairy free just because we are, but it's the same exact thing for regular mashed potatoes, which I've made a million times on the show, okay? Well, maybe not a million, maybe like three, but anyway, you take your potatoes, you pour a little bit of your milk, or if you're going dairy free like, our, like we are, your broth, okay? And your sprinkle of sugar. I know guys, I know, you do not taste the sugar in your mashed potatoes. It just brings out the flavor. Contrasts. And the then flavor. it contrasts the flavor, Dave says, very it good. Contrasts. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start salting just a little bit, okay? So then, here we go. You ready for the mic, Dave? Oh, 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 yeah, go. Just a little bit more broth in. Now, then you got a taste test to see if it's good enough. Mmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, let me see. If okay, so now I'm going to add oh. a little bit more salt <clears throat> because the world needs more salt, people. The world <laughs> needs more salt, people. Okay, so then your butter or your dairy free butter if you want. <laughs> Laura says I missed the loud sound. <laughs> Other people saying lowering the mic is great. <laughs> okay, and then, well, we can't use that. Okay, then test again. Man, your wife is a good cook. Okay, no. now the only difference is if you're making it dairy free <laughs> is you substitute chicken broth for milk. That's all you do. Now, I will tell you, you guys will be like, oh, that's gross. But last Thursday, when I was testing these recipes, because people were asking me for these recipes, Michael put a link to them. Um, I made these last Thursday, and then I left, and I had an appointment. And I told them, I said, dinner is on the counter. And I did not tell them what dinner was. I mean, they saw it was mashed potatoes and chicken. But... Here's the thing, all of them ate the mashed potatoes and they were all like, oh, those were so good. They didn't even know that I didn't put milk in, I put chicken broth in instead. What so, is Mike supposed to be getting? The link for the dairy-free chicken 
Garby, <laughs> chicken. Oh, dairy free. Uh, okay, <laughs> so since so many people asked to see how I make the gravy, here's how I make the gravy. So the link that I'm sharing that says dairy free, gluten free Thanksgiving dinner is the one with the dairy free mashed potatoes. Yes. Um, I can't easily zoom in. Oh, oh. You don't need to zoom in, that's fine. Okay, so for those of you who want to see how to make gravy, this is super, super, super simple. All right, so you take the broth. In our case, we're using beef broth from our roast, and you pour it in your pan. So you put the broth in. Okay, you put the broth in. Then, you take your measuring cup, which I don't have one of. Then you're gonna take your cornstarch or arrowroot or flour, either, any of those will work. Flour, if you can eat flour, cornstarch. Non-Newtonian food. All right, and then you just put in a couple tablespoons. And here's the trick for lump free gravy. Stir your thickener in water, cold water first and get it dissolved and then pour it in your gravy. Okay? <laughs> then you're going to add your salt and that's it. That's all you do. Now, if you don't have a lot of gravy and you need to add water, to make it stretch further, you can put in a beef bouillon cube or a chicken bouillon cube if you're doing turkey. And the gravy's on the Thanksgiving post too, right? Yes. So I've shared, I've been sharing the Thanksgiving dinner recipes post and the dairy-free, gluten-free ones. And if you miss them, you can go to our website at livingonadime.com and it's right there as well. Yeah. Okay, so then you're just gonna stand here and let it, get to boiling it's okay let it get to boiling and then you will be ready to serve bye good luck on your night driving all right on the <laughs> be careful i love you do you know jesus dave what? <laughs> might be a little extra careful since it's uh even though the roads are probably dry but there might Watch be a slippery black, spot guys. here or there yeah okay so you're just gonna get this going here. Whoops. Um, Mary says, my mother makes that too. Did you add in sugar? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, the sugar balances out the salt and everybody's like, oh, nasty sugar. Actually, you don't even taste the sugar. If you taste the sugar, you put too much sugar in because the tablespoon of sugar, two tablespoons, depending on how many mashed potatoes you make, you won't taste the sugar in, um, in it. All right, so there you go. We got this boiling, hot, 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 hot. Taking it off the heat and I'm stirring it. Tracy says, why not hot water? Wouldn't it dissolve easier? I'm not sure. No, it lumps. Hot water makes it get lumpy. Okay, all right, so now, let me test my gravy and see. Oh, your wife is a good cook. Don't ever forget that. You know that, right? Okay, so here we go. Some mashed potatoes. And then we're going to put some gravy right here. <gasps> and then we have our roast and our broccoli salad, and this is our dinner tonight for $5. Oh, that'll be awesome. Do you, do you need me to get behind the camera and tilt it down? $5 for dinner. Oh, you already showed it to everybody. No, I should have put the whole dinner on the plate. You put it on a paper plate. We should get those pretty plates again. I know. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. One more time. Mm-hmm. Mmm. Wow. That's got the real, that's, I didn't, I, for some reason I didn't, in my mind, make the connection about the gravy, but I was like, that tastes like roast. No wonder. Oh, man. Uh, I, I saw a question. Cheryl was asking on the broccoli salad, 
do we? We don't usually add cheese to it, do we? Mm. I usually don't, but you can. This is one of those. This is one of those recipes where you can make everything however you want it. If you don't like sunflower seeds, don't put them in. If you don't like bacon, put it in. Okay, who doesn't like bacon? But seriously. <laughs> I didn't have any bacon, so I just left the bacon out. Okay? But it's still really super good. So, that is how you make $5 dinner. This whole dinner, I mean, I was yapping and dinking around, but usually this whole entire dinner takes me less than 20 minutes to make even with peeling the potatoes because I throw the roast in in the morning on low on 200. That recipe is in our Dining on a Dime cookbook and on our website, Living on a Dime. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, yeah. Um, so I was going to tell you guys something fun. So I got, oh, I'll cover up her address. She may not want that. I got a postcard from Amy Decision. Yes. That was very kind of her to write back. And she said, hi, Tara. Thanks for the cookbook. Looks interesting. I am really retired. I no longer do interviews. I am rusty. But thanks for the kind words, Amy. That was very nice. So I asked, but she's really retired. I totally understand. <laughs> and I'm okay with that. So, so I was going to tell you guys something funny. <laughs> Mike and the boys had a revelation this weekend. What is that? I was going to say, which revelation is that? They discovered that I'm not perfect. <gasps> oh, the gasp was perfect. You didn't even hesitate. <laughs> and we didn't pre-plan this either. Good. Very good, dear. We discovered Tara is a complete and total failure at doing puzzles. What? So I got this brilliant idea to move a table into our living room and have a puzzle table and have a family time. Oh, brother. <laughs> so, this turns so into we, a mom project. So we get it in there. there. Mom's the only one working on them. So mom's putting them together and I'm sitting there putting them together and putting them together and Mike's like, oh, okay, well, I'll come help you. Okay. I put like half the pizzas in wrong. <laughs> So then when he went to go put the pieces, he's like, well, this isn't really fitting, right? Wait, which things? Oh, the puzzle. Yes, yes. Well, there's uh, one place in the puzzle in the bottom corner, because <clears throat> the first puzzle, we could never get the frame quite done, even though we thought we had all the frame pieces. But, but part of the frame was twice as long as the other part. So I was thinking, I think you didn't assemble this quite right. So in the second puzzle... Uh, things weren't working out very well and I was looking at it really closely and in the bottom left corner there was all kinds of copyright information and all rights reserved and everything else and I said to her um I think that these are out of order and she said how do you know I said because the text That's doesn't a... read straight through <laughs> <laughs> so we had one puzzle on there we got it about what a quarter done and I was like oh forget this so I dumped it and put it all back in the box I went to Dollar Tree and bought a Bob Ross puzzle, because I love Bob. Because we have happy trees, happy clouds, happy birds. That was a eh. much more complex looking puzzle than I'm, I'm puzzled, that picture than I'm used to seeing for Bob Ross, though. Bye. 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 Yeah, see ya. And you got dad's cell phone? Yeah. Okay. Careful and, out uh, there. So we have determined Tara is a complete and total failure at puzzle making. We are going to put the puzzle table up and never say the word puzzle again in our home. <laughs> yeah. All right. Um, so you'll just destroy all the evidence that you ever tried to make yes. a puzzle. Yes. Mm -hmm. So anyway. All right. So questions. Uh, Elizabeth says, I like jigsaw puzzles, but tire of them easily have to do 300 pieces or less. Yes. The first one, I don't know. first one was five. Was the second one was three. I'm like, give me an eight-piece puzzle and I'll be good. <laughs> well, I was thinking, you know where there was those there were those eight-piece ones that we had for the kids. And you know what's hilarious? I hated doing those with the kids. <laughs> the I absolutely hated doing those with the kids. So. Uh, all right. So, oh, Stacy says our microwave and dishwasher both died at the same time. <clears throat> we had a microwave, dishwasher, and 
fridge all go together. And washer. And later on, somebody told us we should have checked with our homeowner's insurance because they thought it was lightning. But we had already like bought new fridge? ones. Hi, Ellie. Um, okay, so let's see. Uh, so there were a lot of questions about the roast because I think people were saying, I can't, uh, how do you do that for $5? Because I can't get a roast for $5. <laughs> But no. and then somebody else said I missed what you paid for the roast. Okay, the roast was two ninety nine a pound. Usually, I will get larger roasts so that I am paying for four or five pounds at once, and I'll have three or four dinners. This one was a smaller one, so it was about two ninety nine. The potatoes were about fifty cents. The broccoli salad was about a dollar. So this is the broccoli salad is going to last us three or four meals. The roast will probably just be this meal and the potatoes will last us at least two or three meals. Oh, I didn't see who asked, but somebody said, how did you put the puzzle pieces in wrong? Well, they're almost, there are whole bunches of them that are cut almost exactly the same. I think so, there's only two pieces I think, in this one. I think Tara just was, she said, oh, it fits here. But if you look really, really close, you can see the pattern doesn't quite line up. So... Like it was a fall, it Would was like really some? complex, but there's a place where there's all different kinds of foliage and then there's like an orangish bush, but the piece that's in there suddenly isn't quite orange and you have to, it's really subtle and Tara's not that much of a detail person, so. I do not like details. I absolutely despise details. They absolutely drive me crazy. Yeah. Yeah. So we had, uh, some other questions. Let's see. Um. So, can you add, in order for the broccoli salad, could you add sesame seeds instead? Laura was asking. That might be really good. Yeah. I think that would be good, Laura. Yeah. That um, might be good. Um, I got my broth pitcher at Walmart. It's a Pioneer Woman one. And Miss T says cashews are good at the salad. So. Yeah. Cashews would, you could probably do almonds too. So, you could probably, yeah. you could probably do a lot of modification to it if you wanted to. Although, it might not be the same salad when it's done. Uh, Nancy says, yum, yeah, what kind of broth do you use? Uh, homemade chicken is what I used. You could use beef. So like if you're having a beef roast, you could use a beef, beef broth in there. If you're making turkey, you could just use your turkey broth in it for um, Thanksgiving. Mm. Pretty tasty, even if I do say so myself. Yes. Laura was watching Julie, ah! Julia, and Julie and Julia at the same time. We just watched that the other day. I was like, oh, we should watch that again. I remembered it was being funny. Um, um, can I do a sh article on kids running around while you're cooking? Well, do most of it while they're taking their nap. So like in the morning when they lay down for their morning nap, get your salad made. You can cut up your potatoes and put them in the water with some salt and they won't brown. Uh, my grandma does that, or did that all the time. When they would go to church, she'd have the potatoes all cut up and put in the water. Then when they got home, she would just turn on the pan and bring them to a boil. And then while she was getting everything else on the, tato on the table, the potatoes would be done. Um, so do that. Um, if possible, put up a baby gate and just keep them out. You know, they can stay on that side if your kitchen is really small. They don't have to be in the kitchen with you. Put them in a playpen sitting right on the other side of where you are. You can do that. Um, but, you know, you just have to be careful. I wouldn't do anything like frying. I never fried with the kids in the kitchen. Um, I had, uh, I think it was a cousin. It was it a cousin or a friend? I can't remember who it was. Somebody I knew hit frying pan and it hit the kid and with boiling hot oil so I was always terrified of that so I never never fried like deep fried foods with kids around so actually we modified some things in our house for that reason we used to use a we had a wood stove but once the kids got old enough to move around we took it out because we didn't want yeah. them to burn themselves um <clears throat> let's see sorry oh we gotta sing the marine corps hymn <clears throat> for grandpa today from the halls of Montezuma to the shores of Tripoli, we will fight our country's battle on the land and on the sea. I can't remember the rest of the words. 
I should have them memorized since you I had to sing it every day of my life when I was little. Mm-hmm. Uh, <clears throat> yes, happy Veterans Day, everyone. To all of our veterans, actually, we should call and tell Grandpa service. Happy Veterans Day. And for those of you who have a veteran that's away, yep. thank you, or uh, yes, thank you as well. My grandfather was in the hospital this weekend, and so we should call him and let him know. Mom almost was on her way out. So she may still be. I don't know. We're we're watching to see how he's doing. But did you talk about doing it on a table? Because Tour had asked if you have a table in the living room. Yes, I put a table in the living room to Although do the puzzle. Yesterday she was saying, "I think we're gonna have to take it out of here." Oh, lots of oh, people yeah. loving your your Marine Corps um, song. <laughs> Sorry, my brain is in two places at once. Okay. Um, and by the way, guys, Ellie is taking over the goat milk cream, and hopefully in the next week or so, we're going to have that up for sale. Um, we got jars today, so those came, and so if you guys are wanting the goat milk cream. Samantha, how do I encourage my parents to stop overspending? My mom basically acts like budget is a four-letter word. I'm afraid when they retire, I will have to take care of them because they won't be able to budget in retirement. Um, well, that's not your responsibility. That's difficult. Um, here's the thing. It's their choice. If they're not going to choose to be responsible, there's really nothing you can do about it. But I certainly wouldn't bail them out in retirement. So if they need, I'm not saying you should just leave them completely destitute, but at the same time, if they are choosing to spend this way and then they go into retirement and they still want a big house and brand new cars and all that but then they can't pay the bills and they want you to pay for them i wouldn't do that they're going to need to get a smaller house and used cars and they're going to have to live on like they're living on 700 dollars a month that's the choice they make but it's not up to you to bail them out uh all right let's see sorry there were a bunch of others that I need to go back and check real quick. Let's see. <laughs> Kathy says that you have trouble with the, what was it? The puzzles. Oh, the puzzles because you're ADD, Tara. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Oh, my goodness. Bob drove me nuts. Ooh, Kelly, your sweet potato recipe is the bomb. Made a ah! practice round tonight with walnuts. Yay. Yum. So on Wednesday's night, guys, I'm making the turkey and pumpkin pie dun, 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 dun. because the turkey literally takes like two minutes not even two minutes to make i have to fill it in so i am uh making pumpkin pie to go with it thank you jamie so earlier in the show Susie asked did you boil the? did you just boil the garlic she thought she saw yes you. so for garlic mashed potatoes i just throw in the garlic and boil it with the potatoes. You can use minced garlic from the fridge. If you don't have garlic or minced garlic, you can just put some garlic powder in there and it works great. Yay. Uh, okay, so let's see. A number of people asking if they saw snow out there. Yes. <gasps> yes, we got like two or three inches this morning and they canceled school for the morning. It was late start. And oh, you wanna hear what happened? Well, Mike was thinking, they canceled school today because we had a worse snowstorm last week and they and didn't, they didn't cancel. cancel it then. So here's what happened. So I had a dentist appointment. So I risked my life because I would rather not call on the phone. This is how averse I am to talking on the phone. <laughs> I risked my life to go to the dentist because I didn't want to make another phone call <laughs> to cancel. So I go to the dentist and while I'm there, then I run over to the grocery store because I needed potatoes for the show. So I get home and Jack's supposed to start at 1030 and I get home at 945 and Mike was like, um, well, Jack didn't have any pants. I'm like, oh, I was doing laundry last night and I totally forgot to put them in for him this morning. So Mike said, it's okay. I got taken care of. I said, oh, yay. You're so wonderful after you cleaned up the kitchen, too. So he hand washed them. <laughs> hey, improvise. He it's to overcome. <laughs> but what happened was because they weren't in the okay, washer, well, they didn't that. get wrung out very well. So we had him in, he had him in the dryer, and it took like an hour. 
for his pants to dry. <laughs> so Jack was late to school this morning. I was a complete and total failure as a mother. So you caught me just before I was going to roll it up in the window and drive around the block a few times. <laughs> it was 15 degrees out. I know. I was it improvising. <laughs> <laughs> and his pants will crack up, but here's the thing. He has four pairs of pants, and three of them are gone, and we have no idea where they went. <laughs> I, we can't find them anywhere. I'm like, where in the world did these pants go? So um, so while Mike's giving me more questions, guys, our Dining on a Dime cookbook, you can get it at livingonadime.com. Eat better, spend less. Had another testimonial this week. She saved $300 on her grocery bill. Woo! For six, she was spending seven fifty. So three hundred dollars a month. Nice. She saved. She was. She was spending three seven hundred and fifty, and she was able to save three hundred dollars on her grocery bill for six, all because of the most wonderful cookbook in the full entire world. Yes. <laughs> Best selling, world renowned. Uh... Yeah. So we had a company that wants to use my Thanksgiving on fire video as a parody thing. Well, so we'll see how it goes. I don't know. I may, I may go viral. Oh, what if I go viral with my Thanksgiving fire? <laughs> that would be hilarious. I told him, I said, as you're sharing this, remember I'm a world famous cookbook author with their oven on fire for Thanksgiving. <laughs> Lots of people with... Family in the Marines say they appreciate your song. Uh, <laughs> so. so my grandfather was in the Marines, the Merchant Marines, the Army, the Air Force. Oh, what's the other one I'm missing, Mom? He was in five. He was an Army. Oh, no, he was Army. In, Army. Navy. Merchant Marines, Marines, Air Force. I think there was one other. I can't remember. Mom would know. Well, anyway, um, yeah, he, he was in five branches of the service, I think, over 25 years or something. And then my dad was in the Army, and my other grandpa was in the Army, and my cousins were in the Army. So It's funny because there was a time when uh, we went to a church where they would ask, they would have the veterans stand up. <laughs> and, like, if you're a Marine, stand up. <laughs> if you're in the Air Force, stand up. And he was like... He would stand up the whole time. Um, Hope. So, hey, Tara, a stranger called me a mean mom for charging my 20-year-old rent. He said your son is just a baby. Do you, Are you a baby, Ellie? <sighs> She's not getting involved with this. They are responsible adults. Tell a stranger, get it together, people. Yeah. <laughs> Wear your apron and tell them, get it together. Oh man, I got my ire up today. Well, we have had people tell us that as their as they their older kids aren't moving out because they they have the attitude that well they just need someone to take care of them. But then they get older and then and we're thinking, well, you're criticizing us, but you're struggling trying to get them to move. <laughs> yeah. So. Samantha, I have a short follow-up question. What do you think when parents say I've taken care of my kids, when I retire, they should take care of me? Oh, Boundaries. man. Boundaries. Okay, so here's the thing. It is one thing when it's somebody like my mom or in a similar similar situation where they have not been able to work and they have been responsible with the money that they have had. And then when they reach retirement age or older, that is one thing, okay? Like, we are planning on moving. We looked at a house yesterday, but it's not probably not the house we're buying. But we are looking at for property. And part of us is going to be helping mom get a house on that property and, and build a house on that property. That's one thing. But when parents are just flat out irresponsible with their money and they're not saving for retirement because they want to have fun and they want the pickup and they want the vacations and they want the super nice home and they want to get their nails done and they want to go buy the purse and the clothes and all that stuff that is different that is just being irresponsible with your money and that is not okay and i'm sorry i mean it's one thing it's fine, but if you are going to be taking care of your parents who have been irresponsible with their money, they need to be taking a financial class of some sort 
to learn how to budget and that's one of the conditions of you helping them out so that's not my idea that's a dave ramsey thing i don't normally watch him but i was watching him to get some information on some things and i noticed that was one of his conditions and i think that is brilliant and i what see absolutely nothing wrong if you're going to loan money to anyone i don't care if it's your brother your family or whatever if it is a chronic problem before any money is handed over they must be going to a financial course of some sort or you need to sit down with them and write out a budget and say okay this is what you're getting this is where it's going to be spent on and then the next month if they don't follow that the next month they don't get anything sorry but your parents raising you is not a condition for you taking care of them because they were irresponsible. That's just not okay. Well, and that's the thing that, that's the difficult thing with families. That's one of the reasons we often recommend that book, Boundaries by Cloud and Townsend. And it is on our Amazon store if you want, but you can get it at the library or something too. Uh, <clears throat> but sometimes people, sometimes people make bad decisions that you don't have control over them, but then they try to, tie you to them in a way where you have to do what they say and it's good to take care of your parents if they need help but if they are making decisions that are detrimental and, and you don't agree and you can't change them then they can't really expect to turn around and demand that you support them because they blew all their money yeah so and it's the same with any with your kids anybody we would expect that of anyone and so it's not right for parents to just be flat out or responsible and then say oh well you have to take care of me no that's not okay by any stretch of the imagination um and it's one thing if you have kids at home that are going to college and they're working hard and they're doing their college stuff and you have kids at home okay i probably wouldn't charge them rent if they're doing that but if they're just at home working or if they're at home and not working their little booties need to be out working so or actively looking for work i didn't see so. where it was there was somebody that was talking about uh so if somebody is super responsible and they don't pay rent that they can still have a good outcome growing up. But um, Shannon says, we charge our 18 year old rent and she's more than willing to pay and it makes her proud of herself to, to pay and help with her at the end of the bills. Yes, and that's, that's kind of what we, that's part of our kind of mission is to make sure that they essentially give them great confidence that they, they have the ability to impact how their, their life outcome is. And like when our oldest son, he, he didn't have a problem with moving out because he already was kind of in the mindset of, oh, I can do this because he had the experience with us. We didn't charge him a massive amount of money. It was a lot less than what it cost him to rent his own place or rent with a roommate somewhere else. But it was enough that he had some skin in the game on that and understood, you know, there are costs associated with your mm -hmm. living here. So I think it gives them confidence as they get older, when they have an increasing amount of responsibility. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and you know, and that's that's one of the things, if, if your parents are destitute then and you have to bring them to live with them or whatever, one of the agreements of them coming to live with you is, I would say, you are given their social security money or whatever if they're not responsible because... If they're still planning on going out and drinking or doing their nails or buying purses or whatever or going out to eat going out to eat is a big one for a lot of people or buying new cars and they're expecting to live with you no sorry that's not okay uh i wasn't sure if janice was asking uh she's she said show the spice rack but then she said i love you showed me so i'm not sure the spice rack yeah. so here's my spice rack it's on our amazon thing you pull it out it's got three rows one two three yeah it's really it's really been it's on our amazon cool. store uh i'll share the link to that amazon store again um 
Did we ever answer Elizabeth? How much pressure do you need to put on the chopper in order for it to yeah. work? Mm-hmm. Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Danielle, are those the countertops you did yourself? I'm getting ready to use the same. <laughs> I kind of answered her, but they this... they these are the these are the countertops, but I really probably wouldn't recommend that product unless you've already purchased it. And I would keep your receipt. If it doesn't work, Rust-Oleum will give you your money back if you send them pictures showing that it didn't work out. It, it's okay. But it didn't turn out at all like the product promised, so. Um, Cheryl, I'm making the Dining Out of Dime apple crumb pie for a potluck. She asked, well, how would you recommend reheating it just before leaving for dinner? Oh, just throw dinner. it in the oven for 10 minutes at 350 just to reheat it. Yay. Okay, oops, let me put that, I'm putting that link for the spice rack in. Okay. Um... Do you have a list of uh, gluten-free, dairy-free brands that are better than I others? do not. I am working on it for our new gluten-free, dairy-free cookbook. As a matter of fact, if you guys know of a vegan cheese, after the show on YouTube, go put a name for me because vegan cheese is like the biggest problem. But since I tried it like five or six years ago, they've had huge jumps in making it better. So Jean loves what you did with the cabinets. Thank Yay. you. Mary, were you still going to offer an ebook version of the planner? Yes. So the planner, Jamie texted and said the planner is, um, I think what we're going to do is the five by eight planner set, the apron, the five by eight planner, the, um, <clears throat> financial planner, the, um, menus, notepad, the, to do notepad, the price book, and the menus on a dime is going to be $99. I think it was $120 value, and we're going to have it for $99, so just about 20% off. Then the 8.5 by 11, that is going to be, I think, $115, and that was $130 value, I think, if I remember right. So it's going to be right around there. For the gift set. We're going to have them individually also, but that's for the gift set if you're wanting the apron and the gift set. Yeah, a lot of questions about families. How about elderly parents taking care of their grown kids? I, unfortunately... Unless they're disabled, I don't, I don't, I don't think, think that's should. okay. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's one thing if your kid is disabled or has some sort of something, you know, accident or illness or something. That's one thing, but... Just grown kids who are capable of working? No, that's not okay. Yeah. And unfortunately, a lot of people are very kind of self-focused and they're good at kind of manipulating their families and stuff. Mm -hmm. it's, it is different, like Tara said, if somebody's disabled or something like that. Yeah. But even then, it's possible for a person to, to turn things in a way that's not okay. So, yeah. Yeah. Let's so, see. looking for any other questions here? Whoa, Mary, it looks like we'll have a Thanksgiving party of 30 plus people. Wow. Woo! You need to use my turkey. And here's the thing with my turkey recipe you can make the turkey the day before. Take it off the bone, put it in an aluminum so you don't have to clean another pan. I mean, you don't have to, but I would just, for a buck at Dollar Tree, get one of those big pans. And put t take it off the bone, put it in the pan, pour some of the juice over the top, seal it with foil. Then an hour before dinner is ready to go, put it on low about 275, 300. Let it warm up and it'll taste just as good as if it was baked that day. I have done that many times. Uh, let's see. I, I think there are... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. This is a great vegan cheese. Oh, so... Kathy, tell me what it is. I think it was a little further up. Hmm, you can buy okay. almond cheese and that's vegan. Well, Courtney said that, so I'm uh, not sure if that's the one she's referring to. Oh, sorry I look so rough, guys. Oh my goodness, I didn't realize I looked so rough. Rita, so if you order November, will it be available the first of the year? So here's... It's going to be available before Christmas. <clears throat> Do I dare say that? So, if you order and you're one of the first 500... For the planner. For the planner or the planner gift kit, those should be ready in time for me to ship by December 10th. Priority mail for Christmas. If you don't get in the first 500, 
I cannot guarantee it won't be here for Christmas, but it will be here by the beginning of the year. Um, uh, oh, yeah. Did I? Yeah. Oh, go ahead. So there are a number of people talking about vegan cheeses. Oh, diet okay. cheese? Hmm. Okay. Uh, diet cheese, follow your heart brand vegan cheese, field roast. Uh, I don't know what that one is. Field roast chow slices? Hmm. hmm. Okay, I'll have to look those so up. So we're, we're taking notes from all these. So here's something things. that I kind of observed today when I went to the printer. So while I was there, as I was leaving, and I came home and I thought, oh, I should have taken a picture of that. But I got to thinking, you know, our one order for these planners and this the aprons and the planners and the um, gift sets that we're doing, I was standing there and I was like, you know what? This one order is supporting five, six, seven, eight different people. Hmm. And I thought that was really interesting because it's supporting us and then it's supporting the people who own the copy shop. We love you guys. <laughs> Goli and Fareed are great. Um, Go to Copy Cone, Fort Collins. There's a little free little blurb for them. Um, Kevin. They're also the ones that made the color yeah. pictures of the. Kevin <laughs> is their designer that they hired. He's working on this. James is taking over for Kevin, and he came in special temporarily just to help them out while they're working on our big order. I met Mark, who brought the printer, um, or I mean, who brought the binding stuff. And then there was a couple of other people and I was like, you know, this is actually, people don't realize when you buy into a business, you're not just buying a product, you're really supporting other people and their lives. So I just thought that was kind of a moment. <laughs> yeah. I had a moment there in the car by myself and I didn't know it. Uh, all right, let's see. Let's see. Holy cow! A thousand people! Hot dog! Okay, we'll do... A giveaway for four books. Oh, okay, so. So, <laughs> wait, comments, yes. don't say anything yet. Don't say anything yet. Let Mike go through the comments. Hold on. Don't say anything yet. Well, actually, I'm mostly there. Okay, so. look through the comments. Do we have any last comments? Uh, when are we going to do another Bible show? I don't know. When do we do? Let's just get started right now. <laughs> no. I was just thinking about that last night, so it's funny you ask now. Uh, okay, so I guess that's, I have... Just pulled a few of them down. So okay. A few. Um, so. How's my grandpa? Well, he's not doing real good. Um, his kidneys are starting to shut down. So he's home and he may, he could live another 10 years, but he's kind of acting like he's ready to go. He's. He's 93. He's, is he 93 or 92? He's 92, 20, 26. 27. Oh, okay. He's 92, and so there's just been some things that we're kind of wondering if if uh, he may go soon. So They've been in really good shape for their yeah. age, especially. Yeah, and they're still, both Grandma and Grandpa are at home, um, but Mom does have her stuff packed up and ready to go in case something happens and she needs to come out. So. Uh-oh, they're going all crazy on YouTube already typing in book. <laughs> 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 Everyone knows the okay. drill. What book All are you right. doing? So we're going to do Dying on a Dime Cookbook. I have some, um, oops. I have some classic editions, not the 20th anniversary editions, that we found when we had our big printer debacle. <laughs> so I have some classic editions. We're going to give away four of those. If you want a book, type in the name book. Not the name, the word, book. Sorry guys, I'm really worn out today. I can't go to the printer and do a show on the same day. I try to do them on opposite days, but since we're just really on a time crunch with these planners, I had to go up today. So anyway, so I'm not quite with it. But anyway, type in the word book. We'll give away three on YouTube since there's over a thousand people and we'll give away one on Facebook since there's 200 or 162 people on Facebook. All right, so YouTube has already gone crazy, so do you want to pick Holy YouTube right cow. now? Holy cow. Okay, YouTube. Go scroll step. Lori M. Woohoo! Lori M. 
Yay. You have brown hair and you have a little smiley face. Lori M. <laughs> Email me, editor at livingonadime.com. Give me your name, give me your address, and give me the name of the book you won, which is classic. Those three things, please. Okay. Okay, you ready? Wait. Go! Did you say one on each or? Three on YouTube and one on oh, Facebook. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're feeling good today. Ready? Go! Stop! Nancy Miller! Woo! Woo! Yay, Nancy! Nancy. Okay, now Nancy, you have brown hair and a smiley face too, I think. Okay. <laughs> She's saying a yeah. smiley face because people are smiling. <laughs> yeah, in their book. Okay. Editor at livingonadime.com. Your name and your address and that you want a classic. Okay, one All more right, one on more. YouTube. Keep going. Scroll. Now go the other way. Oh, yeah. Now go the other way. Doing it, doing it, doing now it. Now go the other way. Stop! Dun, dun. Brooke Danielle. Yay, Brooke. And you have no picture. You just have a red little Facebook, YouTube, or no, YouTube thingy. Woohoo. All right. Now, Facebook. Here we go. You ready? Scroll. Stop! Scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. John Sundrup. John who? Well, I think it's Sandra. It, it just went. It just went off the screen okay. after I got it. There you go. So John. Nice job. Or John's wife, if you're the one watching. Your name, your address, a classic. Tell me you want a classic. Please <laughs> give me your name and address. <laughs> please, please, please. And that you want a classic book. All right. Editor at livingonadime.com. Ready, ready, ready. That's it. We were doing three on YouTube and one on Facebook. Oh, okay. Because there's a thousand people on YouTube. Oh, I see. Well, so you're doing it based 999. on the number. 999. Whoa. Do, 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 Can we get one more person? Can we get one more person? <laughs> All right, guys. Any final questions? We'll stall for about two minutes here and get any final questions well, While we're waiting quick. for final questions, um... Dana asks, you shared the last week's color of your kitchen. Good evening, everyone. You shared last week's color of your kitchen. Would you mind sharing the color of your living room? Yeah, thank you, Mike and Tara. What kind of yellow is it? I don't remember. Oh, this makes me think Mr. Blanding builds his dream home or house. Does it... Yeah. Okay, go ahead. I'll tell you what, if you just... <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. Just go down to the market and get a pound of your best butter and you can't go wrong. Keep going. <laughs> I don't remember the rest of it, but it's awesome. That's a great movie. Blue. If you haven't seen Robin's it. Robin's egg blue. Only not a sky blue and not a navy blue, but a Robin's egg blue. Green. I want to be a perfect sage green. I don't want it too yellow, but then I don't want it too brown either. Just the perfect sage green. So then the painter guy was talking to his assistant and he said, did you get all that? He said, yeah, blue, yellow, red, green, orange. <laughs> It's Mr. Blanding's Built His Dream House. It's a hilarious movie if you yes. if you haven't seen it. Yes. Okay, any last questions before we go? Uh, oh, thank you, Mary. I wanted to tell you I've been reading the Bible you sent me. A million oh, thanks. Thank you, Mary. Yay. I'm glad. If you guys don't have a Bible, whenever we do our Bible shows, or, well, they're not Bible shows. We just end up on the Bible. We will send you a Bible on us. Well, you can contact us anytime, right? Yeah. Anytime, email me, editor at livingonadime.com, and we will send you our favorite study Bible. Uh, so, are we still watching Christmas movies? Yes. Of course. And, and woohoo! Guess what? what? The radio station has Christmas music. <laughs> Yay. They are with it. Thank you so much. Yes. I'm so happy. I listened all the way going up to Fort Collins and all the way going back, and I was just singing, Oh, Holy Night, Silent <laughs> Night, all the way. Uh, oh, actually, so it's funny. Rita said, Windows went from daylight to night. Yes. yes. It just dives into the darkness, too. Yes. Uh, <laughs> in love with Robin's Egg Blue. Yes, that's one of the ones on there, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, when do you start decorating for holidays? Well, we try to wait till the day after Thanksgiving, but lately I've been doing it like the week before because well, it's just, it's, 
it's a lot of work and I want to I want to enjoy my Christmas tree. If I'm going to go to that much work, I want to enjoy my Christmas tree. And this year because of the way that Christmas and Thanksgiving fall really mm -hmm. close together, like only 3 weeks apart, we were contemplating putting up lights and things mm -hmm. earlier. Yeah. Especially for the lights cuz we have to get up on the roof and stuff. <laughs> oh, the... you're welcome, Marie. Marie was happy to get her Bible too. Oh, you're thank welcome. You. There you go. <laughs> um so let's see. When should we watch for sales on turkey dinner stuff? Next week. It's already started this week. My Walmart has marked their turkeys down to 78 cents. This week at my Kroger, the soup mixes are on sale. The, oh, I brought an ad. Where'd the ad go? Oh, I was going to talk about that. Oh, well. The soup mixes and all those are on sale this week. Cake mixes are on sale this week. Um... I'm having a hard time remembering off the top of my head what I saw on sale. But anyway, yeah, they're already starting. Julie, we're going to a Mannheim Steam Roller concert oh, this weekend. Yay! That's my brother's favorite. That's my brother's favorite uh, band. Nina, I need a Bible and I haven't had one in years. Contact us. You can send an email to editor at livingonadime.com or you can go to livingonadime.com and just click contact and tell us that and give us your address and we will send you one. Yep. Yep. Sometimes it takes me a day or two to get it sent, but because usually when we offer Bibles, we get several requests. So if you want one, please, we will just send you one. And White Christmas, my fave. Yes, we actually like White yeah. Christmas too. There are tons and of Holiday Inn. We should have. We should put a post together. With I was going to try and do that today, but I kind of had to deal with the planner, so. Uh, let's see. Oh, work to live, not live to work. This yes. is my first time to watch. Yes, Woo! and we love your name. And we are debt-free, 100%, including our house. And now we are growing rich. That's why we are living on a dime to grow rich. Oh, so you already stated that. Yay. Because uh, they were asking for us to explain. Okay, I... <laughs> everybody, I don't know what happened with sourdough. I don't know if some, some cooking show on TV or something did this, but... The potato flake starter in Dining on a Dime cookbook. So in the 20, if you have the 20th anniversary edition, it is on page potato flake starter 126, <coughs> page 126. I am doing that in January because we have all the holiday recipes we have to do, but I'm going to be making the potato flake starter, which is a sourdough starter in January. So just so you guys know, see, I planned ahead. Hey, give me a thumbs up, guys, if you are proud of me for planning ahead. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. Believe me, it's a, it's a, it's a big coup for you to. <laughs> wow, Akshay says I know, I know how to make Indian dal, and I looked it up to see, and it looks Does good. It, it looks really it good. We've really been, eating, we've really been into a lot of Indian food lately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so send us um, your recipe if you like. The small planner is going to retail for twenty nine. But we are going to have a pre-order sale, and I'm not sure yet on the price for that. I have to make sure I have the final correct price from my printer before I put it on sale. So, um, yeah. Ooh, turkey is 33 cents at Meyer in Michigan. Oh, I'm emptying my freezer now. We're cooking out of our freezers. I got them cleaned out Saturday, and now we are cleaning not cleaning we're eating all of the extra food to make room for the turkeys because i love turkey i could eat turkey for every meal and i would be okay with that i think your mom says we usually take them down the week after christmas although it's hard to say no we well the... so we take all the stockings and the regular decorations but i leave my tree up through at least saint patrick's day sometimes easter and i switch ornaments out so then i have a snowman tree in january I have a Valentine's tree in February, and then I have a St. Patrick's Day tree in March. And then depending on when Easter is, if it's in April, I will have a Easter tree. <laughs> yes. Yep. Um, yeah, it's funny somebody was saying uh, that they didn't have any Christmas music yet. We noticed when we were in Wichita, they have a great station, B98, for, music, for our Christmas music. And here in mm -hmm. Denver, it's cozy. Yeah, um, but I'm sure a lot of places have those, and we just love it. <laughs> if you're in Denver, you'll be listening with me, and you can bond with me through the radio waves. We can have a bonding moment. I have logged probably about 50 hours of Christmas music in the last week because I found this one YouTube channel that I really like. We have our own Christmas music on YouTube. 
that we came up with last year, we need to start featuring that. James, where do I ask for a Bible? If you go to, you can send an email to editor at livingonadime.com or you can go to livingonadime.com and click contact yeah. either way and send us a message and we will send you one. Yep. So yay. And that goes for anybody out there. So if you want one, just email us at editor at livingonadime.com or go to livingonadime.com and click contact. What Bible <clears> do you <throat> use to study? Um, New Living Translation, ESV, NIV, what's the other one you use? So for study, I NLT, use... Oh, no, I'll tell you well, that. But we kind of switch between them depending on... Sometimes it's just to get a different translation so you're not reading the same thing over and over. Sometimes it's a different translation because it's easier to read. It just depends. So NASB is New American Standard. I use that for study. Uh, ESV is English Standard Version, and a lot of people use that. Uh, NLT is the New Living Translation, which we love for reading. It's not quite as... It's, it's, it's a... Um, forgot the way they define it but it, the translation is more for the meaning of the stuff and not the exact words but it is a translation uh, and that's our preferred study but uh, not study Bible, our, our preferred reading bible and that's often what we send to people for um who haven't really read the bible much for a long time, or for a long time because it's so easy to to understand yeah. um but if you had to kind of if you were trying to figure out like a very fine detail point of your study um, I, I will use that, but I usually have my New American Standard Bible next to it. And New King James Version is also good. That was the one I was forgetting. So that's yeah. really good. Um, when are we doing the podcast, dear? Actually, two of them are done, and we were just trying to make sure we didn't use music we aren't supposed to use. Yeah. So uh, tomorrow, hope, tomorrow we should have the first tomorrow. one done. Well, yeah. we're making an announcement tomorrow. So sign up for our newsletter, livingonadime.com, and we will make an announcement as soon as Mike gets it up. Okay. Right? Sure. The podcast will be on there live. And it's me and mom. What are me and mom talking about? Because it's been like eight weeks since we did it. <laughs> Something about some some details you pulled out of the e-course, I think. Oh, yeah. We were going through our groceries on a dime e-course. How to save money on groceries. Yes. Yeah. Carmen. Carmen loves NLT. I don't know what NET is. Um, but NKG. And, 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 yeah. So... I like, I like the New Living Translation because it's easy. I originally had a new international version years ago, um, and I still have it, but it, I moved to New Living Translation for reading and New American yeah. Standard for study. But there are others. Yeah, our church uses English Standard. It doesn't matter if you have a digital or a regular paper Bible, but um, paper Bibles, I think it's just good because you see it in a new perspective over digital. Sometimes what happens is you kind of get blind and so I think it helps to switch between the two. You don't have to, um, though. It's not, you know, a requirement. It, of course, anything, in a sense, um, well, let me just say, you really, if you're trying to study or learn what the Bible actually says, you would want to get one that's a translation. And there are a lot of good translations. There are a few that are not translated correctly on purpose. Um, so those you would want to avoid. But... Uh, if you go, if you're not sure, you could ask us, uh, or you could go to BibleGateway.com. Mm -hmm. I think all the Bibles they have on there are, uh, or translations that are ac you know accurately translated. And the thing with the translations is the original language is not English, so or Spanish or French. So if you're in any of those kinds of languages, what you'll have is a translation. And the differences are, in a sense, kind of like um, what's a what's a color for yellow <laughs> that's not yellow mustard so like one person just i'm just saying if you were the simplified version is if you were one person might say it was yellow one person might say it was mustard one person might say it was something else similar and those could all be translations of the same so the reason for the different translations mostly is because the translators if each version think you know this word seems to more accurately represent what the original language is saying so so if you're not sure, you could ask us, or you could go to um, you could go to BibleGateway.com has a lot of yeah. really great translations. Um, yeah. yeah. And I know a lot of people are like, "Oh, the King James version is the only Bible." No, it's not. That was translated. It's a good version, but it's yeah, it was not a good version, version, but it's not the only version. That's okay. Um, 
that version was still translated just like the new versions are translated. It is. It didn't come straight from the apostle's mouth. Um, <laughs> so to say the King James version is just being legalistic, and that's wrong. So it's okay if you like the King James version and you prefer that version, but to say that it's the only Bible that is correct is not correct. Particularly so, if it if it yeah. prevents somebody else from reading the Bible at yeah. all. That, it would be that's... better for you to read a translation that you can understand than to not read it at all. Oh, and I think it was my daily side that asked about the paper versus the electronic. It's not a problem to have an electronic version. The main thing is if... I've heard it said that the best Bible is the one you'll read. <laughs> and that's true. And that's why I like the New Living Translation. It's easy mm -hmm. to... It, it's a lot of stuff that even after years of reading other versions, uh, when I read it, it was... I realized, wow, I totally missed this before. <laughs> because... Mm -hmm. It's kind of nice to have a couple together because um, they, if you have more than, if, if you've been around the Bible for a little while, if you have more than one translation, it's helpful because it kind of keeps you from kind of getting blind to things that are in it. Mm -hmm. And then yeah. you can compare, wait, does this, does this really say that? And then I look in yeah. the other translation. Oh, sure enough. I didn't see that before because it used the other word instead. Bible Gateway dot com is really good it has all the translations so when somebody says something like well the bible says this you can go look it up and see the original languages you can see all the different translations and it's really good to to go between different translations so yes all right um okay and there are not only that some of the translations are in foreign language other languages besides this english so like yeah and I would start with um, John and Proverbs and Psalms. Those are the easy ones to get, um, you know, to get started. Um, Genesis is really good, but if you read from yeah. the beginning, about three books in, you get to a lot of really... Technical stuff. Technical law that was given to the Jewish people. Um, and those things are hard. It's hard to get, to kind of get through that part of it because it's yeah. just so much detail. And there's a part talks about building a temple and it, it gives yeah. every specific measurement <laughs> yeah and that stuff will get bogged down that's why we say you should probably start in john um the best way to study the bible in scripture memory so for studying the bible um just start reading it and then have a pen or a highlighter and underline things that stand out to you it's okay to underline in your bible um so then later you can remember oh wait i remember that you know or if you have a particular topic that you're de like if you're depressed or if you're dealing with anxiety or something like that you can go through and search bible verses on depression bible verses on anxiety bible verses on grief and you can go in and search and then read all those bible verses as your study for the day or the week or the month or whatever and do that as for memory I'm horrible at Bible memory I'm horrible at it but one of the best ways is just to write it on a card and just put cards up all over the place and just like if you go to the refrigerator repeat it ten times to yourself keep it in your bathroom keep it next to the toilet when you're sitting there doing your duty just there in <laughs> Memorize your Bible verses. I mean, you know, just whenever you're sitting waiting for the kids at school or at the doctor's office, pull out your card and, and you can do it that way. So if you wanted to memorize, you could just put a few on a card and hang it up where at a place where you see it every day. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, a lot of people can say exactly where I can usually say what book it's in and sometimes the exact verse. But a lot of the Bible, I'll know what book it's in and basically what it says and then I'll refer back to it if I can't remember exactly yeah so, yeah all right so now they want mom to do a devotional book <laughs> yeah. yeah and pray and ask God to to, uh, to show you Susan's right you know the Holy Spirit will show you how to to study study and to what you need to study because sometimes it's not and you'll start noticing then You'll turn on the radio and one preacher is preaching on Joseph and the trials of Joseph. And then you'll go to church and your preacher is preaching on the trials and the trials, or I mean, preaching on the trials of Joseph. And then you'll go and you'll open up your Bible and it'll just fall to the trials of Joseph. Well, then you know God is trying to tell you something that maybe you should be studying Joseph and his trials. And how is that 
in relation to what you are going through right now. So, Earth anyway. Angel, I'm glad I hear. I want. I'm glad I'm here. I want to know more about the Bible. Y yes. Um, wow, <laughs> that's a big yeah. question. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if you if you contact us, we'll send you one. And if you have questions, you can ask. Certainly. Um, I can't remember who, who the first person to translate into English was. But, I don't know. Um, but you I have can, no idea. Google it. <laughs> oh, I, I want to say there are a couple I can think of, but it's not. Um, they're not the ones. They're not the first. Yeah. But yeah. Um, okay. So I guess if that's all the questions we have. I don't know why mom is having to go. I hope something's not going on with grandpa. Um, okay. So we will be back on Wednesday and I will be making Thanksgiving turkey with pumpkin pie. If you guys do not have a Bible and you want one, email me, editor at livingonadime.com, and we will send you a Bible on us. Um, no strings attached. If um, you don't remember that, go to livingonadime.com, click the contact form, just read our general comments, and we will get that. Um, please check out our Dining on a Dime cookbook. Please get ready because our aprons are coming. Apron, our get it together people apron. Our world needs more salt people apron. And our world needs more salt people apron number two. Those are going to hopefully be up for sale Wednesday. We hope. And the Get It Together People apron is going to be in the Get It Together People financial planning gift pack. And tomorrow, we're going to get our podcast up. Woo. Right? Unless it's going to happen. Unless you get another idea. <laughs> uh, a couple things that, because people are saying, um, one person was saying that they love the Bible app that we recommended, the Bible Gateway, because it has multiple translations. That's true. Uh, somebody, uh, I forgot who it was, um, was saying that they needed a Bible too. Be sure and contact us. Um, thing with Bible Gateway that's uh, kind of cool is you can listen to different translations or you can read different translations, but you can also, a lot of them have an audio link. So if you <laughs> like to have it read to you, you can do that as well. Yeah, like I'm an audio learner, so sometimes I will listen and read along in the Bible. I will listen to the audio version while I'm reading along because I don't comprehend like the majority of the stuff I have to read. I read and so I have to read it over and over and over again. So because of that, I do that. So. And somebody rec uh, somebody also recommended Got Questions, yeah. which is a really good website as yeah, well. Yeah, they're really good if you have questions. <laughs> so, but we were more than happy to answer questions and uh, maybe we should do another another show on this sometime soon yeah. because it looks like a lot of people are asking so yeah um we don't have the link for our podcast yet if you are on our newsletter go to livingonadime.com at the top click on newsletter sign up sign up there we will make an announcement on our newsletter tomorrow and i will make it on facebook tomorrow thank when you, the Ms. podcast is ready thank you miss t i was trying to remember if it was it is john woodcliffe who first translated it into english oh but there was another person. Oh, yeah. I there was knew another that. person shortly afterwards. And oh, yeah. One of the Bible companies is named after him. Yeah. I can't remember who that is all of a sudden. So, yeah. Yeah. A podcast is something you just listen to, like a radio program. We're going to put our podcasts both on YouTube and on our own podcast. But on YouTube, there's not going to be video, there's just going to be a picture of mom and I. The thing for podcasts is they're designed for if for you're working show. out at the gym and you can't look yeah. at it or if you're driving or something like that. So, mm -hmm. And I think it'll make it available to a lot of people who can't sit down long enough to watch the show. But it'll also be a bonus if you watch the show and you like taking it with you also. Yes. <laughs> so, awesome. Yep. All right, guys. We will see you on Wednesday. Please like, subscribe, and share. Please go check out our $25 Thanksgiving recipes. We also have gluten-free, dairy-free if you need it. Both of those are on our website, front page, livingonadime.com. Because we are cooking at home, because we are living on a dime to grow rich. Yes. And we are growing rich by not spending money on things we don't need. 
Thank you, Carmen. Tyndale is the one I was thinking of. He wasn't the first, but it was the other fairly guy. shortly after. And yeah, there's a whole company or yes. Bible production place. Yes. All right. Awesome. All Thank right. you, everyone. Have a great night. I guess since our technical guy isn't here, I'm going to have to go be the technical guy. <laughs> Thanks again. And we're going to go eat our roast dinner. Yum. Yum. Okay, let's see. Ready? <laughs>